Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for our Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. I don't like the fact the top scores here are 900. Um, something tells me we're not going to be able to get a full thousand point score on these scenarios. Well, that's not going to be fun, is it? Uh, anyway, you can see that I am looking at the first two of the uh, six scenarios on the Celta Carlisle route that comes with it. Again, there are six. So you can see I just highlighted the first two. Here's the third. This one looks like it has the thousand possible. Here's the fourth. Here's the fifth, and here's the sixth. Looks like the fifth one, I didn't have anyone scoring on it yet. So some of them seem to have a full score possible, some don't. We'll see what happens as we go along. I don't intend to edit these ones for uh, video purposes, but I'll if I decide I want to uh, get the full score for whatever reason, I'll come back later, because, you know, I like having a nice score at the end uh, every time I finish. In any case, quick look at these scenarios that do uh, have career forms you can see that one of the deltic scenarios also has a career form looks like it also has a top score possible so it has a, a thousand uh scored there as a possibility so that's the delta highlander that highlander uh the next dlc after that which is the rail tours does not seem to have any career scenarios so i'm going to use the 57 at some point as a, a nice set of scenarios to play here we also have uh, down here all the Celta carlisle specials they are all available in career form and we have a couple with zero here no one has a score on this one that's going to be interesting so uh yeah we're going to see how those go at some point this one does and then we have the uh carl uh, pardon me the carlisle special from a class 31 scenario by the way there was a third class 31 scenario i did not mention that comes on this route as part of the uh, 31 pack i thought it was two but i saw a third one on the uh, playback i didn't feel like making a reference to it though but i think this is the last scenario here yeah sherman hill is right there so uh, we only have, besides the Celta Carlisle specials and the six with Celta Carlisle itself, we only have two other scenarios with the DLC that are actually career scenarios. So these other DLC are mostly um, DLC that we're going to be playing for fun. We're not going to be being graded on them. They're more they're more for fun. The 57 and the uh, 31 in particular, and the 50 as well. Of course, the class 40, um, being Armstrong Powerhouse, they don't do career scenarios either. They do timetable scenarios, if anything. So... Yeah, we're going to have a lot of uh, more free play on this route. This is going to be one of those rare times we actually get ourselves graded on something. So we're looking at a 25-minute scenario, the final run, part one. And uh, reading the information, as evening turns into night on the Salda Carlisle line, passenger and freight services start to wind down in preparation for the local signal boxes to be closed for the small hours, which is overnight. Uh, running several minutes early and held at settled junctions, so, which we're going to get to see now in the dark. You are in charge of, you are charged, so should be in charge, but you are charged of the final northbound service of the night, which runs as far as Ribblehead. You will be calling it Settle, Horton in Ribblesdale, and finally Ribblehead. So basically what we did in the tutorial, but starting a little further back at Settle Junction and ending a little further back, not going all the way to Dent, but stopping at River Ribblehead. I want to say Riverhead, but it's Ribblehead. So about the same distance, 25, 30 minutes or so. And then uh, we're going to move to the 15-minute one and see what happens with that one on Saturday. So we got a couple quick ones to do this weekend. Let you enjoy what's going to be hopefully our first nice weekend of the uh, spring here. In fact, it is also Easter weekend coming up. So uh, I want to keep these short and sweet so you can enjoy your Easter holiday as well. For those of you who uh, do make a habit of coming to uh, watch. And thank you for that. I appreciate having you along for the ride. But I don't want to keep you uh, too much from your holiday either. Let's go ahead and get some quick scenarios here uh, and then uh, I'll be off doing my own Easter holiday. I might even have to take Tuesday off. Well, think about it. In any case, let's get started on this. Good evening, driver. Due to the generous amount of padding built into the timetable, you are currently running several minutes early and have been held here to allow a service from Morecam to join the line. Once the signal clears from danger, you can then proceed. Uh, let me just say something about the uh, timings on these crew scenarios. I've only played the first section because I uh, and I was going to do it all blind and see how it worked, but unfortunately I'm already finding it's going to be a horribly ridiculous set of timings. So we're going to be doing some uh, measures I normally wouldn't recommend to uh, <clears throat> do. Uh, first thing I want to make a note of, you can see I'm staring at the front of cab 158859. We don't have headlights. We can just turn on the taillights and that's it. I don't know of any control to turn on the headlights. I looked in the uh, manual and I could not find any keyboard control guide at all for the class 158. So as far as I know for right now, we don't have headlights. And uh, you can see the green, the, sorry, the red signal up ahead as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our train set up so we can start moving. 
As soon as this train starts going by, we're going to start moving immediately because timing is going to be an issue here. So I'm going to actually start my movement a little bit right now. Not much, just a little bit. One mile per hour for right now so I can get myself moving to the signal. You can see 2Y65 to Leeds is about to go by. We're going to have access to that line in just a moment. Applying a little more speed now as this train goes by. There's the green. Let's go. And I'm cranking this thing up and I'm keeping it cranked up all the way to settle because uh, as you can see, our arrival time is estimated to be uh, <clears throat> late. I'm also not going to be hitting the brakes very early either, it's worth pointing out. The brake on this train is decent, so I'm going to be giving this a uh, bit of an experiment here to see how much space I need with the brake on this. It's been a while since my, my uh, Suburban Glasgow 158 experience. And uh, other 158s have performed differently, such as the one on Huddersfield, so I don't know how this one is going to act. This first stop will be a little bit more of an experiment. And then we'll know where to uh, set ourselves for the remaining stops. So there is settle right there. That, that is our stop. Our ETA still has us coming in uh, later than I would like to. And we can't even get up to 60, so we're losing time. So we're about a mile and a third away here. One and a third miles to go. Being a little under our 60, we're not quite going mile a minute, but we should be able to go the two miles easily, I would hope. My first run had me slightly past 2022, and that was going uh, at full speed. I think I was a little bit delayed on my reverser attempt there. I think I forgot to put the reverser up right away, so that cost me the seconds I needed. I should be on time for this. What I can tell you is we're going to be there until 2024. So we actually have a several minute wait, as you can see here. And we're going to be uh, having hardly any wait at the next station. And then the final stop, we just finish and go right away. We'll see how it goes. About a quarter of a mile out, I'll start with the brakes. See how well they work. I'm not going to drop below 45 on this initial brake attempt if I can help it. Turn that off. Okay, let's see how the initial brakes work at 43%. Actually, that's coming off fairly nicely, so I'm liking how that's working right now. Keeping the brakes on. We're going to take them back off here so I can come in a little more. All right, back on. Now we want a hard break. Yeah, we're there in plenty of time. This works fine. I might overshoot a little bit here, but that's fine. Yeah, they're going to say the door can't open on that, but we're going to just take the stop from there. Uh, arrival at Settle, platform number two. Attention passengers, this is a non-smoking station. Smoking is not allowed in the station building or on the station platforms. Only Grand Central trains are allowed to smoke at this station. Thank you for your cooperation. Leaving Settle. Our next stop is Horton in Riverdale. Ribblesdale, sorry, Horton in Ribblesdale, platform number two. Loco stop. Excellent. That's probably for a train like the Class 37, which you can't board the engine. You may have noticed we only got 300 points on that stop. My guess was uh, correct. It looks like we only get 300 points for each of the three stops. Uh, we can only get 900 points on this scenario. So a perfect score is not legally possible. I'm not going to go back and edit these. It's not worth it. Uh... So I'm just going to go ahead and show you a perfect score as is legally possible here.
The train coming up is 6 uh, S91. That is a service to Milford, a class 66. You can see the freight cars on it. I think 6Z95 is the next train that's coming along. That was a train to Neville Hill that we're also going to see passing by. I don't know whether it will be before or after this next stop, but I did see it coming from Ribblesdale when I looked ahead. Let's see how the horn sounds, shall we? That is again one key. The second tone is not attached to the B key like a lot of trains nowadays. We're stalling at 53 miles per hour right now. We are still gaining though. Look at the view up ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Also notice that this version of the 158 does not have the broken window. Now I don't know whether we, if we move the uh, view around the cab, and I'm not going to do it right now while we're driving, but I don't know if the uh, view gets distorted moving around the cab, but at least I don't have to zoom in for a broken window. I can show you the full cab view. So I'm okay with that. I consider that acceptable. So here's that small tunnel whose name I've now forgotten. I can tell you that Blaine Moore Tunnel is the ne only other tunnel on this part of the journey that we're going to probably see. Uh, actually, that might even be after Ribblehead. I don't think we're even going to see that tunnel. So, um, yeah, I think that small tunnel is the only one we're going to see on second thought. Coming up to 57 and a half right now. So we're going to keep our speed going as close to 60 as we can. We're going to have to cut it back eventually. Especially because there's going to be a straight section up ahead where things do flatten out. I will have to uh, cut our speed off for that completely. I think Horton's in Ribbledale. Horton in Ribbledale is after that uh, little gap because I don't see anything there for the station. So I'm easing back on the throttle a little bit now to see where we have to uh, limit ourselves here. We seem to be stalling at 58.6, which is all right for me right now. I think we're okay for time. Let's take a look and yeah, look at that ETA compared to where we're expected to stop. Two and three quarters miles away from uh, Horton and Ribblesdale. What is braking around us? Our brakes are not on, ladies and gentlemen. Something was braking and I do not know what. Taking the throttle completely off because I noticed our uh, 1 in 200 is now uh, allowing us to gain speed a lot more easily. We're back on a 1 in 100 for a moment, so I'm going to go ahead and reapply my 85% throttle. Actually, I'm going to go back to 100 because I'm losing more speed. But we are going to hit the uh, next section momentarily here where it is going to smooth out. We're now on smooth ground, so I'm limiting my throttle a little bit here. I'm trying to avoid hitting 60 completely if possible. I want to stay in the uh, 59 area. We're starting to hit the uphill again, so back to full power for a moment. Whistleboard. I think it just started getting darker. I have applied the Armstrong Powerhouse Skies, I believe, to this route. So you are seeing the Armstrong Powerhouse Skies from Volume 1, Version 1 
of the Sky Pack. I don't have version 2 uh, purchased or installed at this time. So we've got a whole minute to make our stop here. That was probably six, uh, let's actually double check that. Was that 6Z95? 6Z95, sorry, 5Z65. Six, I can't remember the numbers. That's the service to Navilla Hill. Back in our cab. I might have left the markers on by accident. I was trying to turn them off, it wasn't working. So uh, we'll see when we get there. A little bit of a break application now to repair. Actually, we're going to need a hard break here. I do respond to whistleblowers if I see them. That is a green signal. Heavy, heavy break now so we can get our stop in. I think I'm going to overshoot again. This uh, braking power is actually weak, I'm finding. I did not plan properly if that's a correct guess. But maybe we'll make our stop. We'll see. Oh yeah, we'll stop in time. This is fine. Doors are open at Horton in Ribblesdale. A little early too, in fact. Leaving Horton in Ribblesdale. Our final stop is at Ribblehead, stopping at platform number two. I'm fully expecting a yellow signal in the next uh, signal section here. I think that signal is about uh, two thirds of a mile away there, according to the HUD. Uh, that might be a green, but the one after that for sure will have to be a yellow, I believe, based on how the signals are spaced out in this area, from what I understand. expected to arrive at 204007 and as usual our ETA shows are going to be slightly behind that so uh, extra padding no there's no extra padding in this timetable I'm not buying that for a second so that is a green signal we will have to have a separate yellow signal up ahead We are gaining time on our timetable right now, which is good. So we don't have to be all the way at 60 to get time off our ETA. But uh, given how uh, tight these cruise heroes tend to be, we're gonna have to do it because the ETA is not a good guide as to when to arrive. Let's take a quick look at the sunset over our train here. That's what it looks like with version one of the sky and weather pack, ladies and gentlemen. You can actually see the sun, some uh, rays going along in the uh, view there. Getting darker again. Part two of this journey, which is going to be, uh, I think, tomorrow's video, is going to be a little bit darker than this, I'm expecting. And we still don't have headlights. It's like they forgot the headlight model on this train. Now we seem to have a little extra padding in our timetable. Let's go.
Of course, there's also a 30 mile per hour section coming up. We will not discuss this. So that has to be a yellow signal. I can't see that being anything but. There's the station right there. And the stop uh, signal is probably going to be well beyond the platform at this point because I do not see it. There it is. So I'm at 59.1. I've cut my throttle down to 71% as you can see. There's no point really increasing much more. I can maintain speed for a little while here, but I'm going to have to turn that completely off in a moment. Oh, got lighter again. Look at that. So I zeroed my throttle. I'm going to let the uphill do some of the work for me before I have to hit the brakes. At this point, we definitely have plenty of time for our stop at Riverhead. I don't see uh, being late being a possibility at all here. So we're going to go ahead and get some, uh, some of our power off for this 30 speed limit now. This is, this is a green signal. Next signal should be a yellow. There's our warning. That's actually for the 30. So now is when we would have, would have started slowing down for the 30, but it seems a little close to the board for my liking. So You can see I also took the brakes off. I'm going to let the uphill finish the job here. And there it is. We're going to be down to 30 in time. So we can maintain that for a moment. Put a little power on to counteract the uphill. That's our warning for the yellow. Okay, apparently putting power on for the uphill is going to cause problems. That is a yellow, like I said. We have plenty of time. I'm hitting the brakes now. We have plenty of time. Don't know what we're blowing our whistle for. But we were given a whistle board, so I blew the whistle. We're going to just cruise into the platform uh, very nicely here. Oh yeah, this is the end of the platform right here. Let's stop here, shall we? There we are, arrival at Ribblehead. Let's look at our train as we finish. As we look off in the distance at where the Ribblehead Viaduct is, there is one more train coming in. I didn't get its number before uh, doing this shot, so I can't tell you offhand who that is. But uh, it's there. That's our final train that we're going to see in the scenario making a stop here. Nice to see that uh, train going by as the scenario ends, in fact. I like that. Lovely. So we're going to wait for this train to fully go by, I guess. Our stop time, uh, or resume time as it's known as, is 20.40. Uh, so technically that's our resume time. The train's going to probably be moved back to the other end of the platform when we take on uh, scenario number five, part number two of this. Uh, thank you, driver. Thank you is now one word. You've completed the stops successfully. So the train's going to probably be at the other end of the platform when we start next time, because that's the scenario start point for that scenario. I'll see you for that. Uh, in the meantime, we have a scoring screen to look at. Let's go ahead and see how this came out. It should be 900, I'm guessing. Yep, we've confirmed that top score of 900 is as high as you can go. I don't. I know there is a mechanic in the scenario editor where you can give bonus points for doing things. I wonder if some of these older scenarios might have had bonus points for being early, uh, and if they have been if they were removed at some point when the RSC at the time decided. Uh, nah, we don't want to do that mechanic. Uh, we're going to get rid of the whole bonus points thing, but they never actually adjusted the scores, if that is the case, to allow for a perfect score to still be possible. In any case, as you can see, anyone on my friend list, uh, top score is 900. So uh, it looks like uh, Agassi lost nine points somewhere. Not a big deal. Again, it doesn't really matter. 
But um, I've done as well as you can do on this scenario. That's really all we can say about that. Uh, next scenario, I think, also has the same 900-point limit, but the rest of them seem to have 1,000 points possible. We'll see what happens with those as time goes on. We're not doing those other ones at this time, just these two. Um, so let's go ahead and get ready for part number two of the scenario, SC05, the final run part two. We're going to do that as tomorrow's video. I'm going to play it right now, but you're going to see this tomorrow's video. So I'll see you for that. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for your part of the world. I'm Cyclone, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.